my music hits me so hard. Makes me say, oh my Lord, thank you for blessing me with a mind to rhyme and two hype feet. It feels good when you know you're down, a super dope homeboy from the Oak Town. And I know I'm such, and this is a beat that you can't touch. I told you, homeboy, you can't touch this. Yeah, that's how we live it, and you know, you can't touch this. Look in my eyes, man, you can't touch this. Yo, let me bust the funky lyrics. You can't touch this. Finish my fresh new kicks and pants. You gotta like that, now you know you wanna dance. So move out of your seat. Get a fly girl and catch your beat. I told you, homeboy. You can't touch this. My, my, my music hits so hard. So hard. Make me see it. Oh, my God. Thank you for blessing me. A little bit of 80s going on. Can't touch it. Listen, it's like an 80s thing. I got into Cobra Kai. First of all, should we say hello to everybody? Hello. Oh, say hello to who, Suki? Hello. <laughs> hello it's the unicorn it's the unicorn girl wishing you dreams and love hilarious caviar what? dreams and champagne with suki give it a little roll call who's up on the screen who do we oh, have Oh, cherry hedrick jane hicks rory Wright, full of giordano basile rosemary bacon jordan gray brenda Reperta, donna freshetto marcia julie caroline beverly and it looks good <laughs> Say hello to the fairy, Scott. Uh, hi, fairy. Fairy Scott. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Tuesday, so everybody. Shira thinks this, wait, I just want to tell you, all weekend long, she called this Scott the fairy. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> Don't make me go to HR, no, she, Snooky. No, I'll she, go right to she HR. Believes in tell everybody. I believe in fairies and I have six. She has I'll six. And she puts fairy traps all around the house, and so they have fairies that come like male fairies girl fairies fairy accessories anyway she says that this one looks like scott can you say fairy accessories on tv <laughs> <laughs> look there's a bunch look at how beautiful they are she don't, keeps all her fairies in here don't make me go to hr suki because we have an extensive hr department here on this show so, wait, mom, hey, wait hey. don't worry. Look, they're all beautiful. They're wait, all Joshua, different. Joshua. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, I'm doing all of the time. Well, so listen, we don't have a. Scott the fairy. He, he's the leader of the fairy group. Ah, uh, yes, I am the leader of the fairy group. <laughs> I am the leader. That's Mila, the girl fairy. Flora. I am your Flora. leader. Flora fauna. Pinky. Pinky. Nice. They're all over. I mean, they're everything, and they're very fun. And she has fairy traps all over the garden. Strawberry. Oh, strawberry. She's got them. So, she, you know, we go hunting for fairies in the morning before the school bus. <laughs> I used to go hunting for fairies. Gem, 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 gem. Gem, gem. She's gem. Ah. All right. Thank you, Shiloh. We got to go on with the show. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Uh, Donna writes, love how the show is so normal, kids and fairies. It's great. <laughs> but anyway, um, so Scotty, I was doing like, I was watching Cobra kids, Kai. Because... fairies and slime. Go ahead, Shyla, please. So, um, you know what um, is so awesome? I was watching Cobra Kai with my son, and I just had I this nostalgia for the 80s, like going to the arcade, hanging out, putting my hair. Isn't it a like, great soundtrack? You know, yeah, just looking so, you know, like everybody was like carefree. It wasn't so prim. Well, we primped a lot, but, you know, it was just a different time, you know? Well, wait, were you watching Cobra Kai or were you watching Karate Kid? Which, what were you watching? I was watching Karate Kid and then the we went into Cobra Kai, yeah. Oh, okay, because Cobra Kai is now. The, yeah, Lawrence. I know. Them now, the guy with the drinking problem. I got the whole thing. Johnny Lawrence. You remember Johnny. Johnny. I don't really know their names, but yeah, I know who they are. Sweep the leg, Johnny. Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg. Uh, yeah. But but it just sort of, you know, because I watched Karate Kid, I just really made me in this. Wow. Compared to the life we live right now under COVID. Yeah. I mean, like, God. These kids the are missing out. These kids are missing out, man. Yeah. 
Soup, turn down your speaker just a hair. Oh, okay. All right. We have uh, Suki. What a what a what a week we got going on here, Suki. What a week. We have got a show tonight, Suki. You know how we got Frank Sapola is coming on, award-winning radio and TV broadcaster, 38 years in the business. He's got Amazing. a thing out with crazy stories, Soup. People are going to love it. Hey, Monia coming up tonight. Remember those guys? I love those guys. Remember, hey, Monia? The brothers, yeah. The brothers, mm -hmm. yes. And and Megan Farrell, who was on with us over the summer, another great Separately. singer. Yes. They're, they're together. Tonight, they're playing together. How, are they together together? Or do they're they together. get together? They're physically together. How? It's going to be wild. Wow. All right. Very I don't know cool. if, if the two brothers are dating Megan or she's dating one of the brothers. I think she's probably dating one of them. If it's a whole menage a trois thing going on. Mm, but they I doubt that. Together, but so. yeah, but you know, hey, you don't want to plant that freak flag. Let it fly. <laughs> Uh, what's going on, babe? Big weekend. It was. Uh, uh, you know, listen, do you know we're three weeks away from the election? Just saying, get out the vote, get out the vote, regardless of who you're voting for. Just get out the vote. Um, what else did you did see? You oh, did you see the numbers of Corona going up? Going up. They're going up, Sue. Did you see the president doing his little dance? I saw the president doing a dance too. <laughs> oh, that was emb that's embarrassing. <laughs> so um, embarrassing. Let's see. Uh, I just saw the Corona numbers going up and I just kind of went like this. Ah, oh, geez. Yeah. Corona's going up. Corona's up. Stocks are down, Suki. Stocks, Stocks are down. Are and, um, you know, you know, we're really close to getting a vaccine. And like, you know, there were a couple of setbacks within yeah, two uh, keep clinical telling trials. You, keep telling yourself that. But they, I think that we're going to have one by next year. I'm really positive about that. I really yeah. feel very. When you say next year, Sue, do you mean uh, like November, December? What do you, what do you, what do you, you say? 2021. Yeah, 2021. I, I think it's going to be late 2021 going into 2022. Uh -huh. And I really don't predict life really becoming normal until 2023. So you're telling me we'll be doing this show at least until 2023? Is that what you're telling me? Because this show, this show only Unless stays on. Unless they shut off the lights, which they might. Suk, this show only stays on if things are abnormal. You realize that. Once everything's normal, this show goes off the air. I mean, I feel like it's going to be a couple of a minute. Like, I don't think we're putting away our masks anytime soon. I'm just saying that. I do think that the economy and everything is going to start to roll, but I don't think normalcy, whatever normal is, I don't think it's going to happen for another two, three years. I, re I really don't. And quite frankly, I think the, the first thing that we have to do is get a vaccine on the table. And you and I know that. I mean, that's like paramount. And, and, and it's not only the United States I'm talking about. It's about getting the world economy moving. We're also... Yeah. Um, you know, we're also fiscally tied to each other. Um, so, you know, every everything kind of goes hand in hand. Sook, I just had a piece of chicken stuck in my tooth, but just, I got it. Did you just eat it again? Yeah, I That's got it. I re-ate it. It was, it was excellent the second time around. That was the most disgusting thing I think I've seen. I that, that, is that the, wasn't the most disgusting thing. That is the most scooby thing that I think most people do. Where they dig in their mouth, oh, they I look at it, it, and then they Suka, eat it again. It I have, a, I think that is so skeevy. Oh, it's such a good piece. Suk, it was a great. You want some? No. <laughs> that really makes me want to vomit and gag in my mouth. You have no idea. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. It is the grossest thing. <laughs> I thought there was nothing Sorry. I could do that would gross you out. I thought nothing I could do grosses you out. Um, chewing masticated food that was stuck in your teeth. Yeah, I got uh, it. And then taking it, it out though. and then chewing it again. It's all good. Well, <laughs> it's like the gross. I might vomit. Uh, listen, Sue. Well, <laughs> Phil just wrote in. He'll be with us till 2023. He loves us. He'll be on the show till 2023 or whenever we decide just to hang 2023? Out. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> What's going to happen to us after, Scotty? I don't know, Sue. We're going to explode. Listen, I want to bring in our first guest. I've been telling you about Frank Sapola. The guy is phenomenal. He's not only handsome. Frank he's, he's been a radio and TV news broadcaster in New York for around 38 to 102 years, Suki. Uh, he's got a guest placement media coaching company. Uh, he's the author of a book about all the funny behind the scenes stories from, you know, covering local news. It's entitled, It Shocked Even Us, right? Because we always say, 
nothing shocks us when you when you're in news because it's everything's crazy every day, right? Mm-hmm. Frank's got a book called "It Shocked Even Us," and I'm going to bring it up for you right here. Here he is. Look at how handsome that gentleman is. Wow. Right there. Frank Zappola. And we worked together back at Channel 9 here in New York, Frank and I. You and Frank. So uh, let me bring him in. There he is. Hey, 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 Frank Zappola. I want to say two things first right off the bat. I have no problem picking my teeth and eating the food. Uh, Frank, you, Frank. Frank, that is so gross. I have no problem Frank. whatsoever. And number two, I just I tuned in a, a moment ago. <laughs> and you were talking about a menage a trois, and I don't know what kind of show this is, but <laughs> I was a little uncomfortable and intrigued at the same time. And I'm like, I'm you know, know it, it, that's kind of how this, where the show goes, right? <laughs> I mean, like, you know, you know, Scott, my kitchen, my kid is shirtless walking around, you know, Scotty's always yelling at him, put a shirt on, put a shirt on. Look, I, work, I, 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 saw, I worked with Scotty, you know, at Channel 9. And how Super- was that? How was that, Frank? Well, we have stories, and Suki, you and I know all the same people. There we are. There we are on the set with the uh, (laughs) great Captain Trigg. Look how young we are. You know what's funny? Look at this. Wait, hold on. Look at this set with, like, the paneling, like the Brady Bunch wall. Yes. The paneling behind us. That is really some old school stuff right there. It looks like a 1970s basement. Remember when you (laughs) had parties in the 70s? You'd go downstairs, you know, paneling all over the place. You know what I'm talking about. I think it looks, you know, listen, it makes me nostalgic for all that. And you know what? The young kids love it. The kids love it. It's coming back. Don't change your basement. It's coming back. Oh, did you see the Drew Barrymore show? It's kind of like she's behind a news desk. She's like talking about like random stuff. But it's it's got that same sort of vibe, except... 2020, you know what I mean? Nothing nothing says news, hard news, like Drew Barrymore. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? On top of it. Can I tell you something, quite frankly, Frank? And you and I know half the world does get their gets their news from Facebook. So (laughs) if it's on my Facebook feed, it must be real. I just saw a story about Cardi B apologizing for an an accidental topless shot, and I'm saying, how do you accidentally become topless and it ends up on Instagram? How does that happen by accident? <laughs> well, it was that other actor that had it on his camera roll, right? His, you know, yeah. privates were his. Yes. What was it? Captain America? What was it? Yeah, Captain yeah. America? Chris Evans, right? Chris the, Evans. You know, the A block. The A block is, you know, the, the judicial hearings on the nominee. Then you go right to Cardi B. Then you go right to something the Bachelorette did, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. You've been there. We've all been morning. We've done mornings, all of us. We know what that's like. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? That's now news for everybody every day. Nobody yeah. really cares because that's what really counts on Twitter anyway. Frank, <laughs> listen, you know what What a lot of people don't know about you, and I just remembered this today when you reminded me, you were once a stand-up comedian back in the day. And you, act, you opened for Seinfeld at one, at one point? I did. I did. And this is probably 1980. He wasn't obviously wow. famous then. I came on before him. There I am, a young Frank Cipolla, skinnier. Oh, look at you. <laughs> look at I, you, I Frank. The, the brick background is, you know, the classic 1970s, 80s brick background. But we all did the same uh, you know, clubs. We did, you know, Catch a Rising Star and a Comedy Cellar and all that other stuff. But, yeah, it was pretty good. It was 20 minutes for $20. And in 1979, 1980, that was good money. That was nice. great. I can't you. imagine like being there as a, I, I always say, I give stand-up comedians all the credit in the world. I couldn't be able to talk about the irony of, of our, the life that we live today. I mean, seriously. And yeah. just go up there and do a bit for like five, 10 minutes off the top of my head. Well, I used to love Scott with Mr. G doing all those bits. I mean, I could see you guys brainstorming after the show. <laughs> it's great stuff. Very good stuff, man. And Frank, listen, you got this book out right now, which is uh, everybody in the business loved it. It shocked even us. More crazy stories covering local news from you. There you are, right there. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, let me tell you what I do with this book. Let me tell, tell you me what's going on. Yeah. What have you got in there? First of all, I, I tell everybody to buy as many as possible at full price. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Yes, absolutely. And number two, with friends and family, I jack up the price 20%, and then I give them a 10% <laughs> discount, and everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. This is a behind-the-scenes look at all the funny things that happen before you go on the air. It's sort of a memoir as well. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I had these stories in my head for 30 years. I finally put them down on paper, and I enjoy it as much as anybody else because I lived it. I worked with Imus in the morning. And Soupy Sales, they did news on his show. I was there when Stern was there. Wow. I did local news at, 
in Staten Island to begin with, and then News 12 New Jersey and Channel 9, the Wall Street Journal Radio Network. And, and you know when you go out on the story, Suki, you know this. Oh. The stuff you see is is this stuff sometimes you can't even tell on television. But Frank, but what I love, uh, what I, how were you able to have the wherewithal to kind of document it so you can go back to it and yeah. refer it, uh, refer to the moment, the instance, the mm -hmm. something that made you stop and think and pause. I mean, was this something that you thought, you know what, I got to start writing this down because one day this is all going to come in, you know, like a good reporter would. Yeah. Well, you know, we're all storytellers. And I took sort of my comedy background and started telling stories in a funny way. And they were funny to begin with. But I, I started making mental notes of them. And I said, one day I'm going to put them down on paper. So what I used to do, Suki, is before I went to work in the morning, which was about 9.30, I left for work at 9.30, I'd get up about six and I'd bang out three or four pages. And, you know, and wow. I did that over three and a half years. And the book finally came out. And wow. you know, my daughter edited it a bit and we had it taken care of and, and we launched it. And I just love it. I, I have it in my bathroom. I hope you don't mind. But once in a while, I just read a story about me. <laughs> ah, it's hysterical. Oversharing. Right. I know, oversharing, right? It's oversharing. No, but it's, it's good. Idea. It's good. It's good, Frank. It's good. You have a great story in the book when you were working at NBC Radio with Imus. Yeah. Everybody knows Imus around the country and Soupy Sales back in the day. Tell tell us the story. I don't know if Suki knows it. The story with the uh, with the frosted flakes or the corn flakes in the oh. studio. Oh, I don't know it. I don't know it. Tell me. Well, I did news on the Soupy Show, and it came, the Soupy Show came right after the Imus Show. Okay. So Imus used to wrap up. He'd leave. His crew would clean the studio. I would go in and I'd do the newscast. And in that five or seven minutes or so, Soupy's crew would come in. It would give them time to transition. So one day, Soupy, you know, I loved Soupy. We all watched Soupy when we were growing up. We loved Soupy. Yeah. And, and I tell the story, eventually we didn't like each other, but that's another story for the book. <laughs> but one day, you know, it was Soupy, it was Imus, it was Stern. Each one of them thought they were bigger than the other. And for a while there, they weren't talking with each other. You know, Soupy would send me to Imus. Imus would give me the message. I'd go back. They weren't talking with each other. <laughs> but anyway, one day I'm doing the news. You know, President Reagan said today, and I got my suit on and my hair coiffed, yeah. you know. And, <laughs> and, and Soupy comes in, and Imus had a habit of eating cornflakes at the console. You know, <laughs> eat a big bowl of cornflakes in the morning. And there was one flake. It was just one flake that sort of fell off the bowl and it was there and he forgot, the, you know, crew forgot to wipe it up. And Soupy flipped out. He went nuts during the, uh, and, you know, this is, this is I'm Soupy. I'm Soupy. And he left the flake. You know, he went to the program director. And it, so Soupy, so I just heard about this and, you know, you know, I miss. So like a two or three days later, I come in and I'm doing that transitional newscast, but there's something different. There's a vibe in, in the studio that, you know, wasn't there before. And, and I look up and Imus is still there. Now, Imus was the first one to walk out, but he's still there as I go in. And I'm saying, this is odd because Imus usually walks right out of the studio. Imus had an industrial sized, you know, Costco box of cornflakes <laughs> that he ripped the top off of and he sprinkled them all over. The <laughs> and I'm doing the news and it's raining cornflakes on me. I had them in my hair. I'm like... <laughs> And of that course, that started awesome. the big thing. There was a fist fight in the hallway, and and I'm 27. Oh, years the old. good old days! The yeah. good old days! <laughs> good old days of radio. Oh, well, I, I, I tell this, I tell this story with Imus. I'm I'm one of two people alive that that have this classic Imus story. He came in drunk one day at about 4:30 in the morning. I was an intern, and I'm sitting there with Charles McCord and Sam Hall and Bill Maher Sr., the comedian's father, was working in that newsroom, and Jack Welby, and all these great news people. Wow. Anyway, there was a, a prominent African-American newsman. His name was Lem Tucker. Lem and Tucker. I just came in and, and just, you know, drunk. He threw a derogatory remark at Lem Tucker and started calling him names. Lem took about five minutes of this, not five minutes, five seconds of this. He stood up, walked around the table, and with one shot, hit Imus in the face and crumpled <laughs> to the ground. Everybody jumped on every, pulled him apart. And I just stayed up my manual typewriter saying, what the hell is going on? <laughs> By the way, no, no meetings, no HR meetings, uh, you know, no anger management classes, just oh, yeah. resolving things with their fists. Oh, that yeah, was, yeah. That <laughs> is incredible. Yeah. You know what? Um, some of your uh, some of your other memories, you have to share some more because that was really good. That one, that yeah. was good. There's a great, there's a great story. With Jerry Seinfeld, of, right? That one? Seinfeld, Ted David, there's the a Ted great David story. story. Yeah, this is another one when I was an intern. I worked in the same <laughs> building you guys did. I worked at WPIX Radio. 
On Holy the crap, WPIX had a radio? Of they the, did. It was yeah, PIX 102. What year was that? That remembers. It was PIX 102. It was just after the earth cooled, Suki. Right after that. They had, <laughs> <laughs> they had a radio station. And you knew it was a different time because you'd walk into the station and you would be hit with a cloud of marijuana smoke. <laughs> Because the jocks would be in the back, you know, after the show. It was just a uh, clown. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, so uh, during when I grew up, I listened to WNEWAM with Ted David, Williams, B, William B. Williams, all these great guys. But Ted David was very prominent in our family. We loved, we loved Ted David. We absolutely loved him. You know, my mom used to listen. Anyway, I found out that WNEW was around the block from Picks, right around the block. So during my lunch hour, I walked around the block and I sort of wandered in. I went up to the landing. I pretended like I belonged there. Somebody opened the door and I slipped in. The secretary was having lunch too, the receptionist. And now I'm wandering down the hallway at WNEW. Now it's a dream for me. It's a dream for me. I'm looking in the studio and I hear a voice in the distance. It's Ted David. I said, oh my God. I wander up to the studio. I cup my hands like this. I look in and Ted David's there. He goes to the song, you know, the door's ajar and I'm looking in and Ted looks at me. He doesn't know who I am. He doesn't know if I'm the owner's son. You know, And he was like, come in. He, he And I, I, I looked at me. I said, you want me to come in? So I sort of poked my head in. He said, who are you? Now, Ted David had a very ornery personality. I didn't know this. He was a real pain in the ass in the industry, but I didn't know. So I opened up the door. I said, Ted David, I'm Frank Cipolla. I, you know, I'm, I'm studying radio in college. I'm a big fan of yours. I've been listening to you for years. This is a big thrill for me just to talk to you. One day I hope to be you and so on and so forth. He looked me up and down and said, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> One compliment too much. <laughs> he just said, get the fuck out of here. That was a true story, man. That's hysterical. I love it. I love uh, it. It's great, yeah, man. It is. Great. I love it. We I've listened, we had some some great people that we worked with at Channel Nine. Um, you know, some some legendary people over at nine, right? Yeah. Frank Field and, and Stormfield. You know, yeah, I don't Frank know and Storm. Where are Frank and Stormfield? Somewhere in Florida, right? I, I, I saw Frank Field about a year and a half ago. I was in Florida. He lives in a penthouse that overlooks the Atlantic. He's still as spry as ever. His memory is as God bless him. God His bless wife him. is healthy. They live they're in their nineties now, but you'd wow. never know. Wow. But Scott, you remember this. We used to do promos for the newscast upcoming. You know, we'd go in there, we'd sit down, coming up at uh, Channel 9 News at 10. <laughs> so I'm sitting on the set. You were there too, I believe. And so was uh, Brenda Blackman or Kathleen Trigg. I can't remember. Where's oh. Frank? I mean, where's, where's Storm Field? We don't know where Storm is, right? <laughs> Storm comes at the last minute. I really don't see him come in. You know, I say, coming up tonight, there's been an accident in Manhattan. Three people are dead. We throw to Storm. He's standing there with a beautiful suit on and like underwear and just socks. <laughs> <laughs> and I just lost it. I just lost it because I was holding it in because we were doing this live in break in the, and here he was, you know, with this beautiful suit and just, you know, shorts and rat, ratty shorts and, and sneakers. Yeah, on. Storm Storm was a cat. Boy, Storm used to love, Suk, he used to throw me in the car and we'd go around the corner there in Secaucus for a Popeye's fried chicken. <laughs> I <laughs> So I love the Popeye's fried chicken, and I, I turn me onto it. I uh, when I worked at Channel Two, I mean, I mean, you know, it, that was kind of like the time where you would talk about Michelle Marsh, you, you know, yeah. Storm Field. I mean, these were like you know the titans of you know local news back in the days. I mean, yeah. it was just it was just such a different time, and I know. I also think that um, people were much more. Uh, respected in so many ways. I don't, I don't know. I, it just, it, it was a valued in so many ways that I feel like now we're just, you know, just, it's just, um, you're just a commodity for now until you're not no longer a commodity or however they value you. You know, it's, it's just, it's just a very sad time. Too bad that there are not enough people that can actually create a more cohesive environment for people, you know, to work that, that, that there's, there was room in the, on the table for everybody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I tell, I tell a story at the very beginning of the book. And you're so right, Suki. I, I have young reporters come to me and they say, what do you think of my reel? And I say, well, you, there's no stories there. It's just you doing a stand-up, a stand-up, a stand-up. Yeah. You're handsome. 
or yeah. you're you're very pretty, yeah. but you know, do you know how to write? And they look at me like that, you know, what do you mean write? Do we have to actually do something? I, <laughs> I was in the village one night, you know, and a young woman came up to me and she said, I really would love to get into TV. I'm, I, I think I'm very pretty. I said, you certainly are. I said, have you worked anywhere? Until? She said, no, but I'm, I'm really pretty. I look, I'm, you know, my hair is always <laughs> like this. I said, well, that's great. You are. She said, but, I said, but you know, have you were, have, do you know how to write a story, construct a package? And she looked at me dumbfounded like, but I'm really pretty. Yeah. And now she's the main anchor at Fox 5. <laughs> probably. <laughs> she probably is. I mean, it's, it's so true. Oh, it's so true. I mean, it's, you know, listen, these kids are so telegenic, right? They're, they're going to be more telegenic than we, we ever will would ever be. Innately, they are. My children are innately, they're just able to, like, process things in a different way. They, my son is 11 years old. He's editing, you know, on his own. He's, you know, he's actually teaching himself because he, he's interested. And there's YouTube videos. So I, they do so many things that we don't do in a bigger context. And I get it. But there's also something to be said about experience and valuing that. I feel like journalism, if you if you don't get to, you know, my friend always, a really good friend of mine, when I was telling her I was transitioning out and gave her my reasons, she was, it's kind of weird that you do that because you, you're you in your um, mastery level of what you do right now. It, you know, I would think like most most careers that at this point of the game, you're you're right where they need you to be, you know. But they don't look at it that way. That you're you're a master of your craft, right? You know? They Frank, don't look turn, at it that. Turn down your your volume just a little bit on your computer. My volume? Yeah, yeah just a little bit. I'm hearing Suki's voice coming out of your computer. This is live right here. This is so live. Look at me. I'm doing this. Like <laughs> live, right live, but you know what I'm saying? Like the whole. Uh, you know, I don't know. That's what I tell Scott. Like Scott can. Scott can do you, but all of us can do stuff with our eyes closed in a different in a different way. I, yeah. I, yeah, well, you know, the reporter now, the TV reporter soon will be like a radio reporter. You know this. I mean, I, we've had this, this discussion. I think Scott and I have had this discussion. Now that people can zoom from anywhere, you don't need the big studios anymore. You sell the building. You get yeah. rid of the news cars. You you uh, uh, engineer the the entire newscast from home. You put a green screen in the anchor's house. You put a green screen in the weather person's house. There's no news cars. There's no overhead. You know, there's no sexual harassment lawsuits because nobody's around. And you do everything <laughs> remotely. I mean, that's what's going to happen. And What's by the, the way, rock? by the way, just for the record, Scott did not know that woman. Just for the record. I, want to go I did not. No, that I did not. <laughs> uh, listen, because yes. you two are such such news hounds and well respected anchors. In he the hates business, the, I, we I we're always like talking about the news too much. He goes, Suki, this is a news for no, you. No, no, I I put like? together I put together a little quiz for the oh, two. Oh my god! Okay. I, well, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and forth. You guys are going to you guys are going to tell me whether or not you think the headline I show you is real. Or fake, Ooh. and I'll ask each one of you to let me know if you think it's real or fake, because I know you guys can sniff it out. We, we got it, right it out. We got this, Suki. I can sniff out a rat. <laughs> All right, here we go. You guys ready? Headline yeah. number one. Here you go. Homicide victims rarely talk to police. Uh, I would say that that's a headline. Well, if they're victims. They can't talk to police. That is not a headline. Oh, Frank, sorry. That is indeed a, a real headline. headline. Here Don't we go. Don't too much into it, Frank. I this saw one like the other Jerry. day. This is like Jerry. This is like Jerry. Don't think too oh. much into it. I saw headline. one the other day. It said man killed to death, which I thought right. was hilarious. Here right. we go. Headline number two. We hate math, say four in ten, a majority <laughs> of Americans. True. I'm going to say true. That is a headline. Yes, All right. nicely done, guys. Four out of ten, a majority of Americans. Here we go. Breathing oxygen linked to staying alive. Uh, phony or real? Yeah, uh, I'm going to say it's phony. Breathing oxygen linked to staying alive. I'm going to say that's that's not real. You are both. Incorrect. It's right there on the newspaper. <laughs> it's real. Okay. Wow. Wow. I, thought that was, I thought the whole thing was fake. There you go. Next one. 
<laughs> Statistics show that teen pregnancy drops off significantly after 25. <laughs> well, he's, 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 he's playing with this now, Suki. I'm going to say that's true. It's all true. That is true. Yes, there indeed. Teen pregnancy would drop off, sure. I would think, after 19, no? <laughs> all right, a couple more. Know. Couple more. Here we go. China may be using C to hide its submarine. Ah, <laughs> mm. true. True. That is true indeed. All right. Uh, you got you guys are good at this. Here's one that could or couldn't maybe not be from the sun. Man kills himself and runs away. <laughs> true. I'm gonna say that's not true. Oh, Suki's correct on that. It is oh, true. Oh no. <laughs> Who wrote that? <laughs> Somebody who, from the Sun. Who there wrote that? Somebody from the. It was it was the headline runner for the Sun. Here we go. Oh, wow. Couple more. Bugs flying around with wings are flying bugs. Uh, I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say that's true. That is indeed true. You guys uh, are correct. Here we go. Is that what it's called? Anthrocnose. Was that? Oh yeah, anthro anthracnose. Anthracnose. Yes. Sorry. Girl school still offering something special, head. <laughs> <laughs> now where, you know, I have I have a follow-up question. Where is this school? Where is this, this school? Is good. This about? is good. <laughs> it's true. And look at that poor lady under the world. Oh my god. It's, yeah. It is true. It and is true. At, and look she at how be, happy she is. She's the headmaster. Two more to go. Here we go. <laughs> State population to double by 2040, babies to blame. True, Tom oh, Phillips true. from that's the true. Catch News Service, Catch Clatchy News Service. <laughs> that's and true. finally, woman in sumo wrestler suit assaulted her ex-girlfriend in a gay pub after she waved at a man dressed as a Snickers bar. <laughs> you know, that's a stretch. I, I don't know about that one, but you know, knowing how this is going, I'm going to say it's true. I'm going to say it's true too, and it was probably uh, in the sun. Yes, you guys got it. They were all true, all, all taken right. from a real headline. Franco, listen, here's the book. Bang, boom. It shocked even us. Crazy stories covering local news. Frank Sapola. Frank, where could people find the book? You can find it on itshockedevenus.com. It's shockedevenus.com. Frank, what are you doing these days? Where can we find you these days after the book? Are you doing a tour? What are you, I, what are you doing? No, you gonna, I am. Are you going to J schools and talking about this at all? You know, once in a while I give a, uh, a speech and I discourage them, quite frankly. No, <laughs> I actually run an escort service out of a small place in Brooklyn. It's going That's to my guy. That's my guy. Well, here, here's my company right here, Contacts Media. Right there. The book is right there. See, it's right there. What okay. I do, Suki, to answer your question is I have a guest placement firm. I use all my 38 years of contacts to, to place people like doctors, lawyers, and cybersecurity experts and all the stations in the major markets and on the networks. And I media coach executives on the performance of television. That's what Wonderful. I do. Wonderful. Wonderful. Franco, you the Frank, best, you're buddy. awesome. Thanks Thank so you so much for being on. on here. I love you guys. I love you guys, both of you. Thanks for having me on. So nice Frank, to keep meet watching. You, we got some great musical guests coming up. Well, I, brought, I brought my, I, I don't have my kazoo because it's in the shop, but I have this. <laughs> <laughs> all I got to you. I'm sorry. Oh, you did bad, bud. Today. That's my Frank, We love you, pal. All right. Thank you. Thanks for I having like me on. He's great, huh? Wow. Great, I mean, I'll tell you that too. must have been fun working with Frank. I mean, like, a, he must have laughed a lot. It is a great book. Wait, Suk, let me just bring that one more up again. Girls school still offering something special, Ed. <laughs> I guess that's a quote from the head master. They just oh, kind of raised it the wrong way, right? Um, Suki, we um, we got Hamonea and Megan Farrell coming up. Whoa. We love these guys. Remember they were on with us, the brothers? Yeah. We love them. And Megan was on over the summer. I don't know if you were on for that show. She was amazing. I don't remember her. Uh, they're coming up. And just to say, here, these people. Y'all a rich girl and you're gone too far because you know it don't matter anyway. You can need lie on your own man's money. Can me lie on your old man's money It's a bitch girl And it's gone too far Cause you know it don't matter anyway I said money, money won't get you too far Get you too far 
Don't you know? Don't you know? <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> Duke, we are coming right back with the boys and Megan Farrell right after this. Her name was Lola. She was a showgirl. Yellow feathers in her hair and a dress cut down to uh, there. She would merengue and do the cha-cha. And while she tried to be a star, Tony always tended bar across the crowded floor. They worked from eight till four. They were young. They had each other. Who could ask for more? At the Copa. Copa Cabana. Cabana. The hottest spot north of Havana. Here at La Copa. Copa Cabana. Music and fashion were always the passion at the Copa. They fell in love. Or was that music and passion were always the fashion? I don't know. That's good. <laughs> Somebody's having fun with Snapchat. Music and passion were all... Wasn't it the fashion? You were making me like double check that. Music and passion were always the fashion. Or At fashion. the Copa. They fell in love. You ready to bring in the boys and get a little... Uh, Nea. Nea. Let's, Nea. Let's, Let's see, do Let's see what's happening there in uh, their neck of the hey. world. Hey. Hey. Is, that, is that Megan back there too? Yes. She's here. Oh my God! Yeah, so tell us the story about how it all, how everybody. Yeah, got yeah. How together. is how is our girl Megan with you with guys you. right now? Because before <laughs> she was your girl, she was our girl. Oh, Jesus. I mean, there's so much of me to go around. We don't have it's okay. <laughs> I'm here for you all. <laughs> and by the way, Megan, I tried like a like the Dickens, if you will, to get your boy Trapper Haskins on. I know, man. I heard about this. That it just still try. I I listen. I'm going to kick his butt, and I'm going to Nashville next week. Hello, <laughs> oh, <well>, little one. <laughs> She's riding around, Megan. She's riding around on her unicorn. Unicorns are real. <laughs> they are in my yeah, house. Totally true. So where, we'll, where get him, we'll get him. We'll get him. We'll get him. We'll get him. Yeah, no, we'll we'll get him on. Where are you guys now? We are in our recording studio, just where? south of Akron, Ohio, Canal Four. Akron, Ohio. Nice, nice. I drove the home. van. I got here yesterday. You can see that we finished our construction project. We had ladders and stuff in the background. Yeah, when time. you played that clip of Hall of Notes, this was all still under construction. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. Yeah. You guys still had your hats on backwards, though, I noticed. Yeah. yeah. And I noticed I was wearing a different Adidas sweatshirt in that one. So pretty on brand, I guess. Yes, right on brand. And and and, and also a drink in hand, boys. I, I We like that. We really do. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know? I've got right. water. <laughs> well, well listen like we three percent so we love, <laughs> it doesn't count we love both of you guys separately i can't wait to hear you sing together what do you got for us what are we doing let's light it up wait you didn't know that we'd be doing this together no no, no i did i had to pretend i didn't though oh okay, okay. that sounds fun. Surprise. Megan, you, megan you blew it i had a, i was pretending i didn't know i wish i could say that, that was the first time i've ever done that but this is not <laughs> Uh, so What's we're both promoting new songs uh, coming out. Ours comes out Friday and yours comes out. October 23rd. October 23rd. Wow. wow. All right. So you so, guys have one coming out on Friday where? Like iTunes and all that stuff? Everywhere. Everywhere, Everywhere good music is streamed or purchased. It will be available Thursday. And what, what's the name of the tune? It's called Lipstick. Not, and you're going to sing that for us? We're going to do it right now. Nice. Light it up, baby. All right. <laughs> Don't know why I keep on promising myself that I will never fall in love again, no. Breaking promises I only ever made to myself. And if it feels like I'm not earning burden, boy, you draw that final curtain on us. Feels a lot like love is just slipping away. Slipping away. Yeah. But don't let go. So don't let go. Your lipstick is on my pillow. 
location I'll just leave it To remind me of the time When you were mine Oh my It seemed like yesterday That we were falling in love Now you touch everything With that velvet Breaking promises we only ever made to ourselves, ourselves. And if it feels like I'm not hurting, before you draw that final curtain on us, feels a lot like love is just slipping away. Slipping away. so good that was so good damn you got boy i'll tell you i don't know if you saw the comments i know up there but uh everybody was People loving you guys that's awesome. so nice voice. very you nice and we listen our audience is very very tough to appease you know <laughs> that's great very hard uh, very hard critics hey um, thank you for only showing the nice ones that really <laughs> makes us feel good we don't no, deal well with this Negative no, they're feedback. all good. In fact, they want to know, like, uh, what was the inspiration? Like, you know, obviously the inspiration came from something. So whose yeah, lipstick was on whose pillowcase? Uh, it's just one of those things where it's, I kind of thought about a time when my my wife and I were having kind of on the outs, you know, and every you leave behind these things that, like, make you completely reminisce about the good times and how awesome everything was. Yeah. And it's a song about just kind of holding on to what you have. You know, hoping it doesn't go away for good. Oh. Uh, did it? Did it go away for good? I hate to ask. No, we just oh, okay, had our okay. second wedding anniversary. Nice. Yeah. Thank nice you, Scott, good. for bringing some realism. Did it go? I don't <laughs> want to bring. Either way. <laughs> yeah, she's still around. He's I still, was only asking because a lot of our a lot of our women are asking if you guys are single up here. We are both married men. Well, now are you guys married? Hey, you guys are um. You, I, I, you look a whole hell of a lot alike. Are you twins? No, he's way, way, way older than I. Way am. older. Okay. Just, like, you guys look like way, way older. <laughs> you guys look three like years, three years apart. apart. <laughs> three years. My God. My. Yeah, and, you guys it really. Just, it's striking, yeah. right? It's very striking. Some folks are writing in Megan. You must be very excited to be there around two very good-looking men. <laughs> Always. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. Uh, but they're like my brother, so it's kind of like, ugh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fine. You didn't I, have to go to, ugh. I come yeah. in here, and I'm just like, you boys, oh, I'm cleaning up and all this stuff. I don't know <laughs> no. about ugh, but okay. I, no. Now, Megan, you, you have a song coming out too, right? You're going to play for us? Yeah, well, Suki had said earlier, like, hey, how do you guys, like, know each other? Well, these gentlemen are my producers. Oh, um, oh really? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we've been working on this record together. Um since since june and um like we talked about last time i was on uh, raising money on the kickstarter okay um, and i was able to reach that goal and we were able to get in the studio um in a time when touring is gone impossible impossible really right now 
Yeah, so, besides virtual. Did you guys meet at the festivals that, that the boys, you know, because you guys, you know, do a lot of indie festivals. Yeah. Or. Uh, yeah. I mean, so we've kind of ran in the same circles of musicians for a long time. Uh, most of our team is in New York and Megan spent a lot of years in New York and then mm -hmm. Nashville too. So uh, we had a lot of the same friends for a long time, but I don't really know the first time. Uh, we talked a little bit about our Guatemala trip that we do every year for the charity program. She's been on uh, like three out of the last five trips that I was wow. on. Yeah, I've, I've been to Gua Guatemala twice. This is wow. the best. Wow. So we, we've worked on music there together. And um, essentially what happened was uh, she opened for us in Nashville a couple of years ago. And she played a couple songs that she hadn't recorded yet. And we're like, man, these are beautiful songs. You should come up to Ohio and we could collaborate. So we did two songs together and just hit it off instantly. And so we just finished working on her full length record. It's amazing. Oh, I love, love it. it. Love and it. This, and Megan, when we, when we spoke, when we spoke and had you on the show, you were, you were in the New England area, if I remember. Mm -hmm. I'm in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Yeah, oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, right. in Harrisburg. Harrisburg. Okay. The Berg, the HBG. Yeah. The Burger. <laughs> I did news. I did news in Harrisburg for four, two and a half years, and I went to school in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Thank you very much. That Ooh. is my my dad's uh, high school alma mater. That's where they went to high school. Was Carlisle? Carlisle. Wow. Yes. Wow. Get out South of Central PA. <laughs> yeah. So I did my uh, time there. I did my time. Yes. Are the uh, are the boys going to accompany you on your tune? Oh, thank goodness. Yes, they are. <laughs> so this song is called Wild and Free, which comes out uh, October 23rd. And it's about um, just embracing uh, who you are. And uh, it's sort of my love letter to all the weirdos and, and uh, freaks out there and uh, anyone who is proud to be different. Yeah. Plant your flag and let it fly. That's oh, it. Yes. If you want my make believe with your head up in the clouds, here's to all the dreamers, the ones who been out in a crowd. Here's to all my people thinking outside of the box, doing what they love instead of being who they're not. To all my widows, all my friends. You are the heroes, wild and free. And when the haters try to bring you down, remember that you are proud and stand your ground. Stand your ground. Here's to all my lovers with their heart out on their sleeves. Yeah, I know it's not easy when you look so openly. Raise a glass to every person, making change within their lives. And pray for all the humans who have darkness in their minds. To all my widows, all my priests, you are the heroes, wild and free. And when the haters try to bring you down, oh, remember that you are proud and stand your ground. Oh, oh, oh. Stand your ground. Oh, 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 oh. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. The females healing all that we've been through. And here's to all the fellows taking heart and healing too. We are not defined by this insane society. And we can make our future any damn thing that we please. To all my widows, all my freaks, you are the heroes. You're wild and free.
song is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. That song is a, a that song is a hit. Like holy it's a crap. Hit. It is. I can hear it on I swear to you, I can hear that on radio. I can hear that song on radio. Well, I'll send you, I'll shoot it over to you. OMG. Or at least the highway on Sirius with Buzz Brainerd. Right? Listen, we wrote that's... that in Guatemala. So I had the idea where wow, Sirius... that song is just so good. <laughs> yes. So oh, good. Thank you. She didn't like our song nearly that much. I know. I didn't want it. <laughs> you know what it is? It just has such commercial play. Like I could just like wow, I gotta I gotta I have some that song, I will. I have Wait, a guys, song that I think they your song to again. I gotta hear your song again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh that was the first song we did in the studio, like when we decided to get back together. Uh, we yeah. were like, let's work on the Guatemala song. And uh, it's, yeah, Wild and Free was born. It was a love letter um, also to my my niece, who is a very brave individual. And I just wanted to encourage her bravery of being 100% who she is. I mean, I just, it just, it just resonates right now because there's so many kids who are going through so much like, awkward, you know, there's, there's nothing mainstream about living right now. You know what I mean? Like we all had our experiences where we were able to form our identities, find our loves, you know, I just see so many kids like just struggling just to figure out and find a foothold and just trying to to kind of navigate. And that Love song yourself. is just, that song is very empowering, you know, in a and yeah. and in a not a, not in a preachy way, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just empowering. And that's what I love about it. That it was very, Let very, that very good. Flag fly. Let it go. <laughs> Yo, wave, it, wave it proud. That song is so good. I love it, man. I love that it. And listen, good. I was I think I was told by your uh by your manager, by your agent, your super agent, Jason, who's actually gonna be on this show, I think, on Thursday. Oh, oh nice. Right. Yes, yes, because I I I wasn't really aware that he was a uh Piano player, singer, out on the road, Constantine wow. Maroulis working his magic. Yeah. Um, but you guys got a you got a little cover tune for us, the three of you guys. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna give this a whirl. We Which were, one? Which song? Uh, uh, waterfalls. Oh, okay. What TLC? TLC. Don't, TLC? don't go. Don't. Go. <laughs> we're gonna do TLC. Yeah. Okay. Yes, TLC. We're gonna chase them waterfalls. Well, go go ahead, ahead. Right here. I would thought we should have done the Copacabana because that was absolutely well, you know. Obvious. We were gonna do the Copacabana, but you know, my my grandfather done. did it. Yeah, that was my yeah. grandfather. Yeah, it looked just like <laughs> it, man. It's remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. What'd you do? Y'all don't hear me. 
So don't go chasing waterfalls. We stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. I know that you're gonna have it your way or nothing at all. But I think you're moving too fast. Here we go. All right. Okay, let's try, right? seen a rainbow yesterday with too many songs have come and gone leaving a trace so now I'm God given is it because my life is ten shades of gray I pray all ten fade away sell the praise and pull your sunny day and like you promised the truth only my faith can undo the many chances I blew to bring my life to a new clear blue and unconditional sky dry the tears from my eyes no more lonely cry my only gleam hope is full of hope can't hope with such enduring pain that they keep them in the form of rain who's to blame for too pain into your own face what a shame doing the rap. Gotta do the rap. <laughs> oh my that god, was left good. eye. That was good. You should Yo, left eye was looking well, up. Good, you. you took the words out of my mouth to left eye. Yep. Left <laughs> eye. <laughs> Sorry. That was good. Uh, that was, that was, that was so good, good, guys. Thank I like you, guys. it. I like it. Yeah, we'll clip that one off later. Throw it up there. Listen, man, you yeah, guys are so great. We love you. Talented. I mean, like, ridiculous. Yeah. We really like, appreciate you having us, man. It's, yeah, you guys have a such a time. fun show. So you are Thank you so much. You guys are so ridiculously talented that Scott and I are like, what the hell have we done with the rest of our lives? What nothing. have we, we done? Nothing. You have done nothing. nothing. <laughs> I don't do anything. I really don't. I, what I do don't I do? either. I, like, it's a miracle you and I were employed at one time. I swear I'm to God. Around, I'm looking around trying to see if there's anything I can play. No music. Nothing. <laughs> you didn't I even bust out the air guitar this time. I got the uh, – yeah, my guitar's not even in here. I got I got Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Well, we'll just have to come back and try again and see if you've dressed <laughs> up on your game. Listen, give us again. When's everything coming yeah, out? When's, where is it? I'm downloading. Okay, so Lipstick comes out this Friday. This October Friday, 16th. okay. iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, however you digest music, it is going to be on everything. Awesome. Love. And Megan, what about you? Uh, Wild and Free uh, is October 23rd, and that will be in the the same stratosphere everywhere you consume music it's going to be available and um we're just so so proud of it i love it listen you guys you guys should try to get the rights to do the cover for that for waterfalls because that was pretty good yeah, all right that's a good idea i'm glad i threw that one in the ring yeah that was nice that was really good i liked the rap part the end what the acapella part i mean it was really very good mm -hmm. really Thanks. nice really nice arrangement Thank you, guys. Listen, Thanks, best guys. of luck. You get, listen, you'll get. you be on again. Everybody, all three, you'll be on again. We listen, we're, we're going to, you know, like when this all this crap lows over, you guys have to come because we're planning like this big show. In New York. Where, yeah. In New York City. Man, I miss New York. Count me live, in. Live stage show. We're going to have everybody, everyone who's ever been on this show, we're going to have them there. It's going to be like a seven-day marathon. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that. Yeah. Oh, I cannot wait. You guys are gonna need some sponsors. <laughs> we are. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna need some alcohol sponsors. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much. Best of luck with the releases, and you definitely you'll be back. All right. Awesome. All right. Thanks thank for you having so us, much, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye guys. See you later. Oh, they are incredibly talented. Suki, that was good. Let that me tell good. you, Megan's song has a lot of like. Wow, that touched me. Yeah, both of them. And the, the TLC and the song. Lipstick, yeah, I mean, the lipstick song was beautiful, too, that it was just a, a a thought of, like, holding on to all those things that remind you of the person that you love. I mean, boy, yeah. love it. So, love listening. You know, you know who I miss lately? Uh, Phil, probably, yeah. Phil's here, Phil. right? Phil! There he is. <laughs> Hi, Sue. 
Oklahoma in the house. <laughs> Phil, Phil couldn't come back on until he was uh, till he till he built up a little more muscle. I wanted to see some moving packs. Phil, how, how'd you like the how'd you like the folks we just had on? Oh my gosh, uh, Megan Farrell and Hey Monet. Yeah. Wow, wow. That's that's a hard act to follow right there. Those guys are awesome. Yeah. Girl. Awesome, really awesome, good. awesome. I love them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Megan, she was great over the summer and, and the boys were great when we had them on last time. And it was just, I'll tell you, man, we've we have some good talent on this show. You do. Man, I would say I don't know how you do it, but I do know how y'all do it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, just just being you guys, and everybody wants to be on the show. <laughs> we got to get this thing to network television. Philly, how you been? You went on a little trip. You were like ro roaming around in, a, in an RV somewhere. What'd you do? No, um, you know we. It's kind of limited on uh, going on extended vacations right now because everything that's going on. Uh, you know, my daughter, she's pregnant with our second uh, grandchild, and yes, you know she. Yeah, she she uh so she really needs her mom around. So we we just jump in the car and we take a uh, little day trips. We've been taking little day trips just to uh small uh towns around Oklahoma and you know find a nice uh small mom and pop places to eat and just kind of seeing the countryside. Yeah, and you know what? All those people need our help too, you know. So if you could stay local, yes. why the heck not? You know, help your help your state, help the people that are like in your town or around your town. You know, we forget that there's a lot to see just in our own backyard, you know? Yeah, there's a there's a show on TV here called Discover Oklahoma. And, and uh, oh. every week they they uh, they pick a, a restaurant or a small town and, and some of the stuff that they have to offer. And we watch that. We write them down and we go visit those towns. So, Very cool. yeah. I mean, way, Phil, I had, I think, at least three people on Sunday texted me and said, Dude, all I see is Phil's commercial during the football game. You're all over the place. Yeah, it's uh, they play the crap out of that on uh, uh, professional sports, which you know, it's amazing. Uh, I mean, we're talking about. Uh, I mean, it's nationwide. It's uh, it's network, cable, and uh, internet. So I'm I'm not complaining. I'm not. Complaining I know you're not, all. Phil. That paycheck must be good every time <laughs> that thing airs. Yeah, you know, I. Uh, I can put I can put some groceries on the table. That's all yeah. right. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll the voiceover it. guy's like, and and this veteran is very happy right now. <laughs> it feels like, yeah, yeah. You know, you know. I uh, well, I was I was in L.A. and I was making that commercial. I actually auditioned for. They wanted someone to be the voice of USAA, and I actually got to audition for that. And uh, man, I didn't get that. But holy cow, that would have been. That would have been some icing on the cake right there. But That's for you. Yeah, and you know, and that just goes to show you have to be ready, you know, because I was going just thinking I was going to shoot that commercial. And they're like, hey, come on over here. We got it. And they stuck a mic in my face and they said, read this. I'm read like, these lines. <laughs> so you got to be ready for anything, man, in this gotta business. Be ready, man. Well, listen, when we started the show, Suki came on and said she was feeling because she was watching the Karate Kid, very 80s, nostalgic. Um, so what do you, you got a little eighties you could throw in for her tonight? Yeah. One of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest songs uh, of the eighties, you know, you heard it played throughout the eighties and still to this day, actually. And, uh, I actually got a lady, I've had people request this song several times, but, uh, it's, uh, you'll recognize when I start singing, I'm, I'm taking, uh, I'm taking some liberties with it though, changing up the uh, tune a little bit, but All you'll right. recognize, you'll recognize okay. it. Cool. Let's do it. She's a very kinky girl, <laughs> the kind you don't take home to mother. She will never let your spirits down. Once you get her off the street, she likes the boys in the band. She says that I'm her all time favorite. When I make my move to her room, it's the right time. She's never hard to please. The girl is pretty wild now. The girl's a super freak. She's the kind of girl you read about in the new wave magazines. That girl is pretty kinky. The girl's a super freak. I'd really like to hmm her. 
<laughs> Every time we meet, she's all right. She's all right. That girl's all right with me. Yeah. Cause she's a super free. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. The ladies yeah, are dropping, yeah. they're dropping their pants right now. Oh my God, I can see it all over Facebook. <laughs> I actually got requests for that song, so hey. But, She's uh, a Rick, super freak. Rick super James, freak. the country She's version of Rick James. I love it. <laughs> Rick James. That girl is pretty wild now. That girl's a super freak. <laughs> but uh, yeah, to uh, to my more conservative followers, you know, sorry about that, but you know, I got to I got to try to appeal to everyone. Yeah, we had a beep you out, a bleep you out on that one. <laughs> uh, what else? What else? Go ahead, Sue. No, I was going to say he's one sexy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, James man. Says, nice tan, Phil. You've been out in the sun? Yes, I have. Uh, doing yard work and uh, I actually floated on the pool a little bit. So, yeah. You look good, man. I mean, like, you know, I'm glad that you're enjoying yourself and more importantly, I'm glad your wife is enjoying it, you know? Yeah, because, yeah. You know, you know, it takes a lot on the wife to, like, you know, manage it all and the stresses and et cetera, et cetera, you know? Yeah, I mean, to, well, I mean, she was, uh, she was a military wife and a cop wife for 40 years, so she's uh, – and now now that she's re- that we are both retired, she's, uh, she's really enjoying the, the stress-free life. You know, we, uh, we've been doing some remodeling at the house – and uh, I just getting ready for the show. I, I ran in there to get something to drink, and she's in there. She's redecorating, and uh, we big love old to smile. do that. Yeah, big old smile on her face, and uh, so yeah, I love it, man. I love it. Well, Phil, well, listen, everybody's been waiting for you to sing tonight. So okay. give us an- give us another tune before we wrap this party up. Okay, uh, yeah, I put this one on my uh, my page yesterday. And it's doing very, very well. Thank you to my followers. I've got like, you know, almost 200,000 views just on this from yesterday. But a little, uh, little Clay Walker for you. If I can make a living out of loving you, I'd be a millionaire in a week or two. I'd be doing what I love and loving what I do. If I could make a living out of loving you. Early in the morning when the sun comes up, I'm punching that clock on the wall, breaking my back just to make a buck, wishing I was in your arms. If I can make a living out of loving you, I'd be a millionaire in a week or two. I'd be doing what I love and loving what I do. If I can make a living out of loving you. Man. Like Clay Walker. He was big in the 90s and he still he still tours when there's no COVID. But yeah, one of my favorite artists. But uh yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for hollering at me today, Scott, so I can uh, come be with you. Um oh, dude, you know, listen, you you come with us every night if you want, whenever you're available. I know you're a very busy man, Phil. <laughs> I got a lot of projects going on. I've got a <laughs> I've got a big audition, uh video audition coming up. I'm uh I'm studying the heck out of my lines for and uh so but, you know, Hi, Phil, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm you getting a few. A, a commercial or a movie or show? What is it? Uh, this is this one actually is for a uh, collection of uh, casting directors who are going to be watching. So, nice. you know, all it takes is that one. You know, and uh, that's it, one, man. All it is is one yes. We all know that it's just one yes. <laughs> one so yes. yeah, yeah. We're I'm, all I'm, working I'm, towards that one yes. Uh, yeah, so listen, tomorrow night, you guys remember Burt Ward played Robin on Batman and Robin, Batman, the series. Burt Ward will be with us tomorrow night. Wow. He, he is very excited. Uh, and Amanda Cage, another singer. She's from Nashville. Going to be amazing. And then on Thursday night, Souk, we got a fellow by the name of Tim English. You know, John Lennon's birthday just passed. Mm-hmm. Uh, last week, and Tim England, or the 40th anniversary, it was anniversary the 40th of his anniversary. death. I'm sorry, yeah. not his birthday. I was going to say 40th anniversary of his death. And- yeah, 40th anniversary of his death, and, and um, Tim English wrote a book. That? It's been 40 years. What That's insane. Wow. Wow. It's insane. Um, Tim hmm. English wrote a book called John Lennon's Playlist, 
uh, and it's really interesting. I've seen him on some shows. It's phenomenal. Um, he's going to be on. Jason Spiewak's going to be on. So it's a great rest of the week. Phil pop in whenever he wants. He's got carte blanche. <laughs> hey, I'll be here. I'll sing a little John Lennon tune. And that's oh, yeah, it. definitely. Yeah, pop on tomorrow night. Phil will do a little John Lennon. And um, Jordan Gray writes, Scott, please floss before tomorrow night show. I think I still got something <laughs> this week. I still got something here. I don't want to look at it, Scott. Seriously, I, that grossed me out. I hate that. <laughs> now that I know, I might be doing it. I'm going to log out because I gagged in my mouth. I really did. And so did, so did half your women viewers. They were grossed out. I'm just glad I, you didn't you know smell it I'm, I'm upset with you, Suki. I can't believe Scott, that. let me tell you, that is one of the grossest things that people do in the world is pick their teeth and then put the food that they pick out back in their mouth. <laughs> Suk, I had a there was a piece of chicken in there. I know, but go. Yeah, it. no, it's like it's it's bad, Scott. It's it's bad. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about something else. Because then I always wonder about like what you're doing with your finger afterwards. <laughs> like if you stick it in your mouth and then you're touching thing, you like skeevy. It's gross. It's skeevy. I'm, I'm hitting the keyboard. Ew. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know where that finger's been. Uh, exactly. And let me tell you, when I was at work and people used to do things like that, I'd be like, oh, God, I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm vomiting in my mouth. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow night, I'm going to go like this and pull out like a full chicken. <laughs> hey, Suki, there's something in my mouth. Pull out a full chicken leg. <laughs> literally... Do it to your wife. She'll be like, you're nasty. You're filthy and you're nasty. I know can your I wife. Make you, oh, can I make you vomit on the show? That would be amazing. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap it up, man. Let's do a little good night, sweetheart, and call it a night, fellas. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Well, it's time to go. Bo -bo -da -bo -bo. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Da, 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 da. We hate to leave you, but we really must say, oh, good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.